Hey guys, Luca here, and today we will be talking about some of the most common software engineering categories and some of the caveats in picking one of these categories. So many people might think software engineering is just one type of job. It doesn't really matter what you do, you will always be a software engineer. That's not always the case. A lot of the software engineering jobs are very specialized, require you to have prior knowledge, very in-depth educational background, when you apply for a job, majority of the job will fall under the software engineering category because other jobs with more specialized skills, like they want to hire separately. So job category that you see very common outside of the software engineering category are data science, machine learning, quantitative analysis or model makers, and cybersecurity. So I would say outside of software engineering, those four are probably very common separated out from a software engineering job. So if you are someone who is very passionate about machine learning, data science, or quant, then you probably don't want to apply for a regular general software engineering role. And you have to really position yourself to have relevant skill that is more catered towards those specialized fields. For example, data science may require you to even have a PhD or at least more advanced knowledge and in most cases just by going to a bootcamp may not be enough to become a data scientist at a lot of the companies that's something to keep in mind and many schools will also have a special track that teaches you depending on your specialization so for example at my school I we had cybersecurity track the general software engineering track and data science track I was doing the data science track and the coursework included more data engineering courses such as using Python to clean up data, run back testing, or you know just simply learn about take classes on machine learning and uh, these aren't all the courses required by a general software engineering. And moving forward, for example, if you are very interested in joining like a hedge fund or quant firm. It's very common they want to hire you as a software engineer. But if you don't want to do just you know the software engineering or data engineer who helps the quant engineer clean up the data or you know build internal tools, help make their life better, then you probably want to look closer to the job description and you will realize a lot of these require a lot of learning. And if you look at some of the candidates' profile, a lot of them actually have PhDs in like physics. Because in physics, you get to build a lot of the models that's very similar to how a quant will build models that can predict the stocks. And because of that, you also have to require very complex mathematics skills. Most of the quant jobs require, they ask you some sort of stats questions. They want to test your mathematics skill, not just coding skill, because they actually think coding is easier since you're not going to be coding most of the time. It's more about building the model and understanding math some sort of science at a higher level. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want to become a quant analyst or like, you know, quant engineer, then maybe it's better to stay in school. It doesn't matter if you study computer science or not. As long as you can go to like a grad school that teaches you those skills, then you should be in a relatively better position than most of the candidates. And quant isn't something that you can just go to a boot camp or something, just really pick up the skill. And uh, yeah, like if you are considering these two fields, it's very important to set yourself up before you even consider applying. There are also different types of software engineering jobs. The most common ones being full stack, mobile, test engineer, uh, infra. So of course the full stack can also be split into client side more of a focusing on the front end engineering or back end engineer. So like depending on your passion and what you enjoy to do, it's very important to you know try to pick one of these categories before you even start your first job on which one you are interested in and without a computer science background maybe you want to focus more on a bootcamp that targets that specific area so let's say if you want to become a test engineer building tools that can automate tests monitor like you know release testing like how the code base the code held you probably want to have prior skill using like python or whatever common testing frameworks and for example if you want to become a mobile engineer then it's probably very important to have some sort of mobile skill prior and even without the skill, it's also very important that your first job that you pick is the one that you eventually want to stick around with. Because sure, like engineering 
jobs share similarities, like the back end might be very similar, they all use some sort of testing framework that's very special to the field. For example, in full stack, you don't really think about how to de develop things from a mobile perspective. In Android, there's a lot of like delegate patterns, fragment usage. That's also very different from how you would design in a component-based full stack application. So that's something definitely you want to be aware of. And from my experience, I, so a lot of my friends, for example, they are one day like, oh, I want to become an iOS engineer but my first job is full stack. Hopefully I will be able to transition you know, to that job. But what turns out is like, once you start your first career, like a very steep learning curve, because most companies' internal technology is very, very different from what they teach you outside. So you already spend a lot of time ramping up, learning it, and then you become kind of like committed into this field. And by doing more and more jobs, like your manager give you a bigger scope project, you feel more comfortable doing it, you kind of realize like, now it's kind of hard to pivot to something else. So I always recommend it's better to pivot early on if something doesn't work out or it's not something you like to do. It's better to pivot out before you are so committed. Or if you are okay with being extremely committed and prove that you can learn, then other managers may be more inclined to let you try new things and pick up new skills. So those are the two things that definitely you want to consider. Which software engineering job interests you the most? Is it full stack? Is it mobile and this is something that they don't really teach you or show you beforehand so when you apply for a general software engineering job keep that in mind like it's also very different and sometimes the job might specifically ask like hey we're trying to hire a server engineer this is the tech and definitely read those blueprints you are down to learn whatever skill necessary then it doesn't really matter but if you are someone who are more passionate and committed into a single stack it's always good to identify that have built relevant skill, bootcamp, school works, side projects. I just showcase that you are ready to tackle the problem that they can throw at you. Say like you are a software engineer, you not just want to switch like you know within this uh, sub pillar of software engineer, you want to switch to some of the first field that I talked about like data science, machine learning, or like you know become a quant. Then the question becomes like what are your options? Some of the easiest way it's probably do really, really well at your current job. Like prove yourself that you, you're a capable engineer, you're willing to learn, you can do a lot of these tasks like very hands off, like you don't need a lot of assistance. And when faced with a challenging problem, you can learn it yourself. These are good traits. And if your company offer any of these categories, then you have sort of like a voucher that your boss can vouch for you. And uh, because of that, you might be able to switch into one of those teams and kind of like, you know, observe and learn while working closely with them. And second thing to keep in mind is like, if your company already have those quant, machine learning, data science roles, and you want to eventually get into that, maybe you already want to be working very closely with them, kind of learn their day to day and really see if what they're doing is what you like. And if you can, if you can observe and learn what they're doing, then maybe you can offer help occasionally and do above and beyond and that can set you up to transfer into those teams. And let's say your company doesn't offer any of those roles, then that becomes really tricky. You want to apply to companies that's willing to accept like, you know, more colorful background, not just committed into this role. And that becomes very hard. And the last solution is, you know, going back to school. Some of these tracks, you could take a bootcamp or take some sort of certificates that can dramatically increase your chance of getting accepted. But a lot of them, they still want to see some sort of higher level education. So maybe you want to consider studying for like the GRE or GMAT and potentially go to grad school to pursue some of these more advanced. Those are some of the most common different types of software engineering jobs. And depending on the jobs, the technology will also be very different. And in the future videos, I will talk about some of the most popular technology that you should learn if you want to go into any of these fields. But in this video, it's just going to be an overview. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely make up your mind. It's the sooner you make up your mind, the better it is. But it doesn't necessarily mean like you can't switch down the line. If you can always do a good job, then it doesn't really matter which, uh, which job you start off as because you can, because you've proven yourself. So yeah, guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace.